to turn for unparalleled coverage of the Saratoga Racing Meet, Capital OTB, and OTB TV. Welcome back to Racing Across America. As noted before the commercial break, we are happy to be joined now by Cot Campbell of Dogwood Stable. Good morning, Cot. Good morning. I'm glad to be with you. And uh, we're going to kick right off and offer congratulations on the weekend win in the Jim Dandy with your Belmont Stakes winner. As I understand, also, you're, you're in line for a rare triple. Uh, Belmont Stakes, Jim Dandy, and Travers, you'll be only the second horse ever to do that. So, Yeah, that's uh, it's a lovely thought. And uh, we do hope we have no reason to think we won't run into Travers. The horse came out of the uh, Jim Dandy in great shape. It was, uh, I was over there at 9 o'clock uh, that night. Give him peppermints and he was back to around stall. So we're ready to go. And we'll watch the stretch run here of the Jim Dandy. Again, number five, Palace Malice gets the job done in this race. You say he's come out of the race nicely. I, I just want to ask you, how special is this one for you? Because you announced about a year and a half ago that you're, you're kind of scaling back uh, the dogwood situation. And, you know, I think you've modified that a little bit since. But how special is it as you scale things back that you have a, uh, a horse that has a shot at potentially a, uh, a Eclipse Award, Palace Malice, I think, has now thrown himself right into the uh, thick of that battle. So again, as you scale back to have a horse live for a championship at the end of the season, how special is that? Well, it will certainly not uh, accelerate one's retirement, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and uh, he uh, is a wonderful horse to have. I used to carry about 65 horses, and uh, now we're back to about 25, which is a nice uh, pace for me. I'm, uh, I don't want to chase any rabbits I can't catch, and, uh, but I don't want to leave the game because uh, I'm a lucky guy to, uh, to make my living in the horse racing business. And uh, he ran very well in the Belmont, as noted. Now he's strung a couple together. Were you kind of like some of the betters out there who, boy, this horse broke the maiden up here at Saratoga last year, Palace Malice, so I think there was a lot of promise. And then it just seemed the Louisiana Derby, there was traffic trouble, good effort in uh, the, uh, the Keeneland race, the bluegrass, and then the crazy pace in the Kentucky Derby. I think everybody was kind of waiting, let's see this horse get a clean trip. Were you the same as the betters thinking that? And then the Belmont and the Jim Dandy has kind of validated that. Well, I really was, because uh, the, he had no chance in the Louisiana Derby, and uh, he was a little green in the bluegrass, and uh, Lord knows he uh, eliminated any chance when he went three quarters and nine and change in the Derby. So uh, I thought if we have an absence of bad luck, and if the cold doesn't foul himself up, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be salty. And uh, we're all looking forward now to the Travers. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Certainly he gets there. Orb shows up. Oxbow with a little ding in the uh, Haskell. That, that's iffy, but I have to ask if you watched the Haskell and what you thought of Arizona. I did watch the Haskell, of course. I was glued to the TV set, and I was very interested because I knew uh, Arizona was going to was the favorite and uh, was going to be hard to beat. And I thought he was most impressive. And... Uh, I note that he came out of it with 116 buyer, and we had a 107, and uh, we ran three seconds faster here, but I know he ran on a dull racetrack, and uh, he was terribly impressive, and uh, it will be, it'll be quite a confrontation, I think, between the two. Yeah, it should be fun, and the, the orb showing up, derby winner as well. We're look, all looking forward to uh, uh, the Travers this year. Uh, we want to take a look at a, another race, another classic victory, uh, and we're going back a ways because we're going to watch uh, the Preakness from 1990. We're going to see Summer, Summer Squall win here over uh, the uh, Kentucky Derby winner, Unbridled. Again, this is 1990. You started putting partnerships together in 1969, but I have to imagine this 1990 Preakness helped put Dogwood on the, uh, on the map. And so give us a little idea what Summer Squall meant to Dogwood Stable. He meant everything, really. He was uh, he was just a wonderful horse, and uh, he put it, put us on the map. Sure enough, as you say, and uh, Unbridled won the Derby uh, with that classic uh, situation where Carl Nasgo was <laughs> explaining to Mrs. Ginner how uh, how the horse was running, and uh, we thought, well, that's very warm and touching. But when we get to Baltimore. It's going to be our day, and it was, and uh, oh, it was a wonderful thing, and uh, no one ever appreciated it more. We've now won the Preakness, and we won the Belmont, and we've been second, third, and fourth in the Derby, so uh, 
Uh, I sure would like to get that one for us over. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, if I read correctly, 70-some graded stakes winners over the years? Yeah, 77, and uh, we've, we've had... Uh, We've had a good go at it. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I want to also uh, touch your memory a little bit and go back to uh, the first win winner for the Campbells. I think we have a shot here of uh, the uh, winner's photo of uh, Social Asset. Good so, uh, yeah, give us a little idea. The first <laughs> winner, we're going back a ways. And it, uh, this horse was notable for another reason. Do you remember a $2 win ticket was? That's right. One of the highest payoffs in the history of Ohio. <laughs> and uh, I had paid, uh, I bought this filly for $1,000, three people owned her, and uh, I think Bobby Nichol Nichols, who wrote her that day, I think simply insisted that she win, because she didn't much want to, and I was not there, but gosh, what a payoff it was. It was over $200. Yeah, oh, exactly. Uh, That's a, that is a nice way to break into the game, win with a 100 to 1 shot. <laughs> At that point, you think, oh, it's an easy game. Right, and uh, <laughs> I did. I was not there day, that day. I'd gone up to see her several times before, and she hadn't done any good, and I'd sort of given up on her. But another partner said he was going, and I said, you're absolutely crazy. And he was a bit of a gambler, and he put a good bit of money on her, and, uh, boy, I wish I'd been there. <laughs> yeah, and, and the rest is history, as they say. Uh, I, I want to ask you, Kyle, a little bit about Saratoga. Uh, I know, boy, you, you and your wife certainly enjoy the Saratoga season, and I know that because I, I, I'll read the Society page in the Saratoga, and you're going to the, uh, the, you know, the balls and the galas and whatnot, but I also know over the past few years I've shown up at the charity softball game with the jockeys and the charity basketball game, and you and your wife are there as well, so you're, you're going to all the events and really enjoying the Saratoga season. So tell us a little bit about what Saratoga means to you and your wife in the Dogwood Outfit. It, it means everything. I know uh, Saratoga has no more avid fan than Cot Campbell, and I've been here since 1971, and it's a highlight of the year. And uh, it's changed a little bit through the years, but it is still, it is the creme de la creme. And, uh, and we do enjoy all aspects of it. We go to the Washington County Fair, we go to Vermont, and uh, we do go to a ball or two. And uh, so it's, it's a time when you take a year of your life almost and you cram it into <laughs> six or seven weeks. And uh, when I go back, I have jet lag, I'm exhausted, but then I start looking forward to next year. And uh, originally you were based in Georgia, which I guess attributes the uh, the Dogwood name. But eventually you moved to uh, South Carolina. So what was the what was the impetus behind the move there early in the uh, the career? Well, I had a big farm in Georgia, 433 acres with 35 people working there, and I was very proud of it and enthused about it. But you know, after a while, I thought, gee, I don't think I need this farm. We've got enough momentum now where we're rolling and. Uh, I don't think I have to have it, and life would be simpler if I streamlined things a little bit. So we sold the farm. We were sort of encouraged to come to Aiken by Mac Miller and Mike Freeman, good friends, and uh, we moved over there. I did not intend to move my dwelling over there. Ann and I lived in Atlanta, but then we, uh, we moved the horses over there, kept the office in Atlanta, but then we fell in love with what is a wonderful town, very much like Saratoga and we moved the whole shebang over. I'm glad of it. And you say very much like Saratoga, Aiken is a horse town. There are no, I don't think there are any racetracks in South Carolina itself, but uh, every year there are the Aiken Trials, which are non paramutual kind of things, but, but it is a big event in Aiken. It is a big event in Aiken, and a lot of great horses have trained there, a lot of wonderful outfits through the years, and uh, uh, every kind of horse. Uh, polo is big, they're eventing, and and uh, hunters and jumpers and uh, so it's a horse town and it went absolutely berserk when Palace Malice won the Belmont <laughs> and uh, I'd said on well, after the race that I bet there would be dancing in the street in Aiken when I got back and when we drove in from the airport, there was dancing in the street. <laughs> go. Very good. Yeah, as they say, it is kind of a horse town. And it's a horse town in the wintertime, correct? A lot of people winter in Aiken with their horses. Exactly. A lot of outfits come in there in November. Darley has a big operation there. They have maybe 85, 90 horses that train on the Aiken training track. And it's a system where you pay $1,200 per year per horse to train there. And uh, that, uh, that keeps the track up. But it's... Uh, 
it's a place where horses are appreciated and uh, it, had, it reeks of tradition very much like Saratoga does. Well, let me touch on, I alluded to it before, you mentioned about a year and a half ago that uh, semi-retirement was on the horizon, you were going to scale back a little uh, on Dogwood, uh, and then I think, as I say, you've modified that a little bit, but I have to ask you, I went to the Dogwood website the other day, seems to be a lot of two-year-olds there, so uh, I think we're going to see Cod Campbell in Saratoga for a while. I didn't see any yearlings, but give us an update on the retirement situation. Well, I've, uh, we've merged with an outfit called Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners, which has had a great success, and effective July 1. I will buy no more horses, but I will continue to manage the dogwood horses, uh, numbering 25, until their days are over or mine is over. And uh, but uh, Eclipse, I will assist them with advice and uh, as needed, and certainly keep my mouth shut when it is not needed. But uh, that's the arrangement. So I would see uh, running out the string with the dogwood horses and have it in association with Eclipse. Very good. And uh, I have to ask you, before you got into the, uh, the partnership game with Dogwood, uh, I read you were in the ad business. Yeah, I'm an old-time sports writer. I gravitated into the ad business, wrote copy, and then had my own agency. When it began to be a little successful, I had a little dough. I bought a horse with a couple of friends, and then I stumbled into the idea of the partnership, which had never been done made sense to me and I started one and I came up luckily with a very good two-year-old filly named Mrs. Cornwallis and she put me in the horse business because the next thing I knew a Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fortune were writing about this unusual concept and uh, I had a lot of partners and a lot of horses and uh, I thought I've either got to be in the horse business or the advertising business and I sold my interest in the agency and burn my bridges and it's been <laughs> no great. looking back that's right that's right L let me ask you this though you were in the ad business in the 60s i gotta ask if you've ever seen the uh, television series mad men i have seen it and i don't remember that things were like that. <laughs> i don't remember that everybody had a quarter whiskey on their desk uh, that sort of thing but uh it's an interesting program and and i love the advertising business but uh I just uh, suddenly found myself in the horse business, and how lucky I am. Yeah, it, uh, that would be a good switch for me, too, to, if I had the chance.